Night is the time we fear the most. It's the time of death and the supernatural. But what is that cry in the dark? What's actually out there? Just occasionally, our worst nightmares really do come true. Another balmy tropical nightfall. But for Evito Burritos, June 1991 was a month she'd rather forget. For Evito, her husband and her two small children were attacked by one of nature's legendary nightmares. They'd been driven from their usual roost in the forest by logging and could no longer find their normal prey. Unfortunately for Evito and her family, one of the first houses the bats came to was hers, on the outskirts of the little village of Apora. These were no ordinary bats. They were vampires. Worst of all, one of the first rooms they came to was that of Evitu's six-month-old daughter, Ivanusa. <laughs> Every wrinkle on a vampire bat's face is there to help it hunt. Its ears are super sensitive to the sound of breathing. In the dim light of her oil lamp, Evitu mistook the creatures scuttling on the floor for mice. So she calmed the baby and soothed her back to sleep. The baby by Nusa. But the vampires were starving. They closed in on their quarry. A brief moment of pain. Then the anaesthetic in the bat's saliva began to work, allowing it to drink undisturbed. When I saw her in the morning, she was covered in blood from head to toe. I was worried, very, very worried. She was so pale from all the blood she lost. Happily, Ivanusa recovered. 
Today, she shows no sign of physical harm. She's still quite a nervous child, but I don't know if it's because of the bats. In all, 314 people in the village were bitten and three died of rabies. All the bats were killed with poison. This mass attack would never have happened had people not destroyed the vampire's roost and made them homeless and hungry. Attacks by vampires on humans are actually very unusual. There are around 900 species of bats and none of them, apart from the vampire, can do us any harm. Yet many people find bats one of the most frightening creatures of the night. They may look weird, but bats' faces are actually shaped by their lifestyles. Fruit and nectar feeding bats like these don't need advanced echolocating systems. After all, you don't have to chase fruit. They actually look rather endearing. But when they began to prey on flying insects, bats had to develop more elaborate tracking systems. Their ears became much larger, and curious leaves of skin sprouted from their noses to help transmit the sound. As their prey became more difficult to catch, the bats had to push their echolocating technology to the limits, and their faces became more and more bizarre. The most extreme of all are the long-eared bats. Their ears are enormous, so huge they keep them partly folded during the day only unfurling them fully for the night's hunt. They can pick up the faintest sounds. A moth warming up its wings before takeoff becomes a cacophony to a hungry, long-eared bat. When hunting, long-eared bats don't give away their position with blasts of echolocating squeaks. They fly silently and listen, maintaining total radio silence. But even the most sophisticated systems aren't infallible. If the moth stops warming up, the bat loses it completely, even if it's only centimetres away. Bats are superbly equipped to function at night. We are not. As the light fades, we lose our most important sense, sight. And that can be fatal. Some animals have specialized membranes in their eyes, which enable them to see in the dark. And back in the 1920s, just such a night hunter began to prey on the people of Rudra Prayag in northern India. In an eight-year reign of terror, 125 people were killed by one of the most infamous man-eaters that ever lived. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. As night fell, the entire population would hurry home and barricade themselves in their houses. But barricades alone couldn't stop the man-eater. <laughs> Had
Having selected his victim, the man-eating leopard was practically unstoppable. His superb night vision giving him an overwhelming advantage over his night-blind human prey. vulnerable and unable to see. The sounds of the night play havoc with our imagination. Wherever there is death, they seem to appear as if by magic. drive a lion from its kill, and they're superbly equipped to crunch their way through flesh and solid bone. With their eerie calls and ghoulish habits, it's little wonder the hyena has a central place in African black magic. It's said witches control them and ride through the night on their sloping backs. If the sounds of the African night are frightening, far worse are strange scratchings and rustlings much closer to home. We should be safe in our own beds, but are we? Rats usually live in packs, so if you see one, there may be a hundred in residence, hidden away during the day, scuttling out to forage, in the quiet of the night. They are dirty eaters and carry disease. Rats can produce a litter of young every six weeks. So they multiply at an amazing rate.
But far worse are the creatures that come into our homes to prey on rats and mice. A giant centipede. This one is nearly a foot long. It can kill a rat with a single bite from its poison claws. British centipedes may be small and shy, but their huge cousins are found throughout the tropics. And though they don't usually attack people, accidents can happen. The pain of their bite is said to be almost unbearable. People have been known to plunge their arms into boiling water to deaden it. Painful though its bite may be, only one person's known to have been killed by a giant centipede. <coughs> Here in southern India, having rats and mice in your house can attract a really lethal lodger. In farming communities, people store food in their houses. That encourages all sorts of scavengers. People traditionally sleep on the floor. But that's a big mistake. The crate, 15 times more toxic than a cobra. It's the most venomous snake in India. If anything moves close to the crate's head when it's hunting, it triggers a lightning strike. Usually, the movement is a gecko or a mouse, but sometimes it's not. Crates kill about a thousand people a year in India alone. Mostly tragic cases of mistaken identity, the snake confusing a human movement with that of its prey. But there's one creature that would never make such a mistake. Its ability to sense movement is almost uncanny.
If you don't like creepy crawlies, this is about as creepy and crawly as they come. It's a tailless whip scorpion, but luckily, it's harmless. Whip scorpions live in tropical caves. In this world of total darkness, they detect movement by picking up tiny air currents with sensitive hairs all over their bodies. Those huge feelers can sense the infinitesimal air movement created by a cave cricket, if it so much as twitches. It's often animals' fantastic adaptations to living in the dark that we find frightening. The weirder they look, the more frightening they become. One of the weirdest lives here, in Madagascar. And many of the local people think it's the most terrifying animal on the entire island. The eye eye. Superb night vision. Super sensitive ears and a huge counterbalancing tail allow it to leap about in trees with fabulous acrobatic skill in almost total darkness. Most bizarre of all, its incredibly thin, elongated middle finger, which it uses to hook insect larvae from their tunnels in rotting wood. So acute is its hearing that it can detect the tiny sounds made by the grubs as they burrow beneath the bark. With its goblin-like appearance, the Ai Ai has acquired legendary status as an evil spirit. But it's totally harmless. In reality, most creatures of the dark are no real threat at all but a few really are out to get us. This is perhaps one of nature's most grisly nightmares, the floor maggot. Floor maggots infest homes throughout tropical Africa. They're bloodsuckers. They're very sensitive to the carbon dioxide in our breath and close in on their victims by following it to its source. Most skin is difficult for them to pierce. The trail of CO2 leads them to the ideal soft spot. Most of us will never come across floor maggots, 
and can sleep safely in our beds. And even these gruesome creatures aren't actually dangerous. In terms of real danger, what are nature's ultimate nightmares? Big cats may look fearsome, but big herbivores, like elephants and hippos, kill more people. Legendary nightmares like sharks only account for a handful of human deaths each year. The annual death toll from snake bite runs into many thousands. On the other hand, South American tarantulas don't appear to have killed a single person ever. But each year, bees and wasps kill tens of thousands. The death toll is small in proportion to the fear most nightmares of nature generate. But there's one creature that is a significant killer, accounting for one to two million deaths each year. It's the mosquito. It's not the insect itself that kills you, it's the malaria some species carry. Like floor maggots, mosquitoes track down their sleeping victims by detecting the carbon dioxide in their breath and flying towards its source. When they bite, they inject saliva to keep the blood flowing. And that saliva carries the malarial parasite. After chest infections, diarrhea and tuberculosis, malaria still kills more people than any other infectious disease. It's been estimated that since the Stone Age, leaving out wars, mosquito-borne malaria has killed half the people that have ever lived. In terms of hard numbers, of all the animals on Earth, the humble mosquito is far and away the greatest nightmare nature has to offer. <laughs> 